Okay, so here I am in the, the temple of Wat Nittad Sasan Akun outside of Marble Falls, Texas. And uh, a number of people have asked me, Steve, what are you doing living at a Buddhist monastery with monks outside of Marble Falls? I mean, what's up with that? And, uh, and the answer to that question really leads me back to 1985, 86, when I worked in China and Southeast Asia for Western Geophysical Company. I got a job over there when I was in Singapore and, uh, and I worked two months on in China and then I would have one full month off with pay and all kinds of uh, you know, plane tickets and perks. It was a great deal. And I spent a ton of time in Thailand because it's just one of my favorite places. And uh, this uh, Buddhist monastery here is a Thai Buddhist monastery. Uh, the abbot and the monks here are from Thailand. Uh, the abbot doesn't even speak English, and he's become my very good friend. But, but uh, I'm familiar with uh, this type of uh, culture uh, because I spent so much time over there. And when I was in Thailand, I went exploring all over the place. And one of my favorite things to do was go into the temples. And many of them look just like this that you see here behind me. And, um, and I would go and sit, and they'd always uh, ask you to take off your shoes and offer you some tea. And you'd sit real quietly and watch the, the monks. And they do a sort of quiet walking meditation, or they sit peaceably. Sometimes for hours they could sit. And I was just fascinated by this whole thing. Not to mention that, that like churches, uh, the uh, uh, Buddhist temples are beautiful and, and ornate and full of history and artwork and culture. And, and uh, so I was always going into these. And one time I went um, with an Australian friend I had met. We were in uh, Chiang Mai, which is in the north of the country, and we went up uh, a mountain, one of the highest, if not the highest mountain in Thailand. Uh, it's called Doi Tung, and on top of that mountain is a remote uh, temple. And uh, we went up there and spent uh, the afternoon. We rode up there on a motorcycle up a long, windy road, and uh, got up to the top of this place, and there was about six or eight monks up there uh, chanting or uh, meditating and uh, walking around and so forth. And, and, but there was one that spoke English, and his, his name was Chung Rapol Sud Sayin. And he liked me because I asked so many questions. And uh, Chung Rapol uh, was very patient in um, explaining Buddhist uh, teachings. Uh, he was the first one that ever told me about the Noble Eightfold Path. Uh, which is a, a key component of Buddhism, uh, right thinking, right action, right uh, livelihood, um, and so forth. And, uh, and very, very simple, basic principles. And he explained all this. He taught me how to ring the, the big brass bell and the gong. And, uh, and uh, you know, it was just very, very friendly. And, and uh, so toward the end of the day, he said, you know, you guys seem very curious about our uh, way of life, why don't you come and stay with us at our monastery down in Chiang Rai, which is outside of Chiang Mai. It's a smaller Thai town. Back then, it was just like a village almost. And uh, uh, so we said, yeah, sure. Uh, and, and so we followed them on our motorcycle. There were several monks that went to uh, a place called Pajom Cave, which is a monastery that's down in some caverns and uh, you you come to this stairway with these big dragons that go up either side of the stairway and uh, and it takes you to the mouth of a cave and you go down in there and in the hot Thai weather you can feel this cool air just blowing out of there and, and you go down and down into these caverns and they have these various little alcoves where all the monks live down there and there's one main chamber with, with Buddhist statues and things that look like this here behind me. And, uh, and you can hear the, ch uh, the monks chanting, and, and they're in meditation at certain times. And, and Chung Rapol and his friend, a fellow monk, uh, were very honored. They, they informed us that they would be honored to give us their beds 
And uh, we said, no, we can't do that. You know, we can't take your beds. And, and they said, no, no, but we would be honored. You're our visitors and our guests, and we, we would very much uh, like you to take our rooms. We'll put some clean sheets on the bed. And, and so we, we just said, okay. And uh, they fed us and, and uh, made us comfortable. And, and uh, the next morning was one of the most amazing feelings I've ever had uh, because about four o'clock in the morning those monks all get together there's about probably 15 or 20 of them all together down you know, within those catacombs and uh, they all get together early in the morning and they start chanting in, in, in unison with this harmony uh, way down in those caverns it just reverberates back through the caverns and it was uh, the most amazing thing. You could just feel this vibration, you know. Uh, as I was waking up, this was, there was a, you know, chanting going on. It was just uh, incredible. And uh, so they, they wake up, and uh, then they showed us how they, they take their bowls and they walk out into the public streets and beg for food. And this is an ancient tradition in Thai culture. Uh, they have this big brass bowl, and they wear the you know, saffron robes. And uh, I could show you a picture of uh, uh, one of the monks. Um, but uh, anyway, that's set up by design so that the monks won't just isolate themselves in some monastery somewhere and not talk to anyone. Their job is to educate the public and to share uh, the enlightenment of Buddha with them. And so they are not allowed to make money. They're not allowed to even cook or, or shop for anything. They are completely dependent on the public, so they go out, and the public, by the same token, are honored to give them food because they receive the, the education from them. And uh, so uh, they, they showed us all about this, and, uh, and it was that really positive experience that made me always friendly towards Buddhist monks. Every time I see them, uh, I always go up and say hello, and if they speak English, they're from all over the world, uh, but uh, if, if they can speak to me at all, you know, they're always friendly, always uh, very congenial. And uh, so this past, uh, uh, not this past December, but the one before that in 2016, uh, my family and I were on a cruise ship, and uh, we were went to Cozumel and, and Belize and, and uh, Roatan, Honduras, and we were on this cruise ship. And I wake up about 4 o'clock in the morning, and I go down to the uh, coffee shop there on the cruise ship. And the only guy in there is a bald-headed uh, Chinese man with little round glasses, and he's writing longhand Chinese in a little notebook. And... Uh, I say good morning to him, and he nods and says good morning, and, and uh, I ask him about the Chinese writing, which has always fascinated me. I mean, I lived in China for a couple of years, and all I can say is hello, thank you, and count to ten. I mean, it's, as you well know, it's a very complicated language, and, and here this guy is, you know, carefully writing it down by hand in this long uh, ledger-looking thing, and uh, so we start a conversation about Chinese, and and uh, it's not readily apparent that he's a monk uh, just right away, but, but pretty quickly I, I start asking him questions about where he's from. And it turns out he's the uh, abbot of the Jade Buddha Temple in Houston. And in fact, uh, uh, when, uh, when I got up to get some coffee, we talked for a couple of hours on the cruise ship. And uh, we talked about Chinese history. We talked about... Uh, Jesus and Buddha. We talked about uh, ancient language and, and where did all the science and mathematics come from and uh, ancient ruins and uh, uh, Peruvian ruins and, and Egyptian ruins, which I'm fascinated with, and how they built these structures. Anyway, we hit it off. And when I got up to fill my coffee, um, he, uh, I noticed that there was a whole group of people that were sitting off to the side and as soon as I left they all went up and approached him and started talking to him if they, they were just respectfully waiting uh, to talk to him and and when I started filling my coffee there at the coffee bar um, a little Chinese man had had this wooden teacup that had belonged to my friend Han and uh, and and uh, this little Chinese man says to me he says are you enjoying your conversation with the venerable 
And I said, the venerable? And he says, yes, the venerable Hung Yi. He's, he's our abbot. And I said, he's your abbot? And he says, yes. And that, the word abbot sort of raised the, uh, the image of uh, the sound of music movie. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just the way my mind works. But, but um, he said, yes, he's the abbot of the Jade Buddha Temple from our temple. Are you enjoying your conversation? And I said, yeah. But um, well, I realized then that this was a man of tremendous importance. And he's obviously very intelligent and, and friendly. And, and so um, he invited me to the Jade Buddha Temple, which I went to visit. And later he invited me to, out to Hempstead, Texas, outside of Houston, where um, he has a 500-acre Buddhist retreat center called the American Bodhi Center. And uh, this is a phenomenal place with an enormous meditation hall and with cherry wood floors and most ornate. It's got uh, thousands uh, of tons of uh, granite statues that were all carved in China that are placed all over the property. Uh, little Buddha statues and big Buddha statues and all kinds of amazing stuff. And, uh, and it's just an elaborate facility. And, uh, and my friend Han, the Venerable Hung Yi, is uh, the founder of it. And, and uh, outside of the Dalai Lama, uh, this guy's, uh, it appears to me, is in the top tier of uh, sort of Buddhist leadership. And uh, anyway, he's my buddy and my friend. And, and so when he found out I was moving up to Marble Falls and, and, uh, and uh, you know, I needed some time to, you know, uh, reflect and, and uh, you know, transition in life, <laughs> he encouraged me to come up here to uh, this Thai temple and, and meet the abbot up here. And, uh, and they invited me to stay. And, and it's a ranch. It's a, about a 50-acre ranch with uh, a beautiful landscaping and scenery and, and just as tranquil as it can be out in the middle of nowhere in the Texas Hill Country. And uh, I'm staying on a ranch with some friends. <laughs> you know, don't ask me as a God thing. But... I thought I'd tell you about all that, uh, and uh, it's a beautiful place. I wish you would come and visit. We live at uh, 300 Double Creek Road, um, and uh, if you ever want to come up or give me a call, you know, I'm at 713-628-1610. I love you. Bye-bye.